rising stars have also been showcasing their talents in the UEFA Youth League. Now in its fourth season, the Youth League is designed to give under-19s the chance to play competitive European matches. The competition began with 64 teams who qualified as domestic youth champions, all courtesy of the senior sides who reached the Champions League group stage. The final four teams travelled to UEFA headquarters in Neon for the season's conclusion. In the first semi-final, debutants FC Salzburg faced 2014 champions Barcelona. The Austrian champions advanced to the final with a 2-1 victory. Zambian striker Pat Sundaka with a decisive goal. In the UEFA Youth League, you have the opportunity to test yourself on the international stage against the best teams in Europe, and that's great for a player. In the second semi-final, Benfica faced Real Madrid, coached by a three-time UEFA Champions League winner with Real. This is a chance for them to start making their names and charting their career paths. What better way to start than by winning the Youth League? It's the most important competition in Europe. But Real Madrid would find themselves 3-0 down inside the opening 20 minutes. Real scored twice to reduce the deficit, but a second goal for Joao Felipe saw Benfica win 4-2 to reach their second final in four seasons. We knew that it would be a fight until the very end. Fortunately, we managed to reach the final thanks to a great deal of effort. So the final at Stade Colivre was between Benfica and Salzburg, competing for the Lennart Johansson Trophy. Going into the game, Salzburg were undefeated and the competition's leading goal scorers with 27 goals. Benfica had played more games and scored more goals overall than any team in the competition since its inception in 2013. And it was Benfica who would take the lead through Jose Gomes in the 29th minute. In the second half, Patson came off the bench to score for the second game running, 1-1 in the 72nd minute. And just four minutes later, fellow substitute Alexander Schmidt would score the winning goal. An historic victory for FC Salzburg, the 2017 UEFA Youth League champions, and the first Austrian side to win a European trophy at any level. I'm proud and relieved that we managed to win the final after such a hard game. Right now, I'm in disbelief. I think it's going to take a few days to sink in, but it really is a feeling that's indescribable. Becoming an under-19 European Cup winner will stay with us forever. We've made our mark for Austria. The Southeast Asian country of Vietnam was the venue for the latest stop on the UEFA Champions League trophy tour. Fans from across the nation came out to welcome a footballing legend, now ambassador. It gives me a huge sense of pride to be able to bring the Champions League trophy here to Vietnam so people can see it in person. This country is passionate about football, as my country is. Starting in the southern city of Gun Tour, the tour crossed the country, drawing thousands of adoring fans. It's my second time here. Both times I've been treated with so much kindness. I've been blown away by how much everyone here in Vietnam loves the Champions League. It was also a chance for Ronaldinho to relive his greatest night in the competition 11 years ago when Barcelona defeated Arsenal. 2006, when we won the Champions League, was wonderful. Few players have the privilege of playing in a Champions League final, let alone winning one. I remember absolutely everything. It was incredibly special. 
Two Dutchmen joined Ronaldinho on the tour as ambassadors. The De Boer twins, Frank and Ronald, spent time with the Vietnamese people and offered them the chance to get up close with the trophy. I'd heard that people here were completely football crazy, and you can see that. There were over 40,000 people here yesterday, and today we're expecting 60,000. That's incredible to see. Football is really thriving here in Asia, and especially here in Vietnam. The De Boers lifted the famous trophy with Ajax in 1995, and will never forget that triumph 22 years ago. In a competition, that changed their footballing lives. As a player, you dream of holding that trophy with the big ears in your hands. And when you've scored important goals, been a part of the team and played well, well, it almost feels like a bit of this trophy belongs to you. I was proud to hold it as a player, and now I'm also very proud to be a part of this. I've won almost everything with Atletico Madrid, apart from the Champions League. Hopefully one day, that will change. A dream once again within touching distance. Twice in the past three years, Club Atletico de Madrid have reached the UEFA Champions League final. And on both occasions, they have come agonizingly close to lifting the trophy both times defeated by city rivals, Real. Experiences like these mature you and make you realize that life is tough. But you have to learn from these lessons and keep working hard so that one day, Atletico are able to win this competition, which is something that we all desperately want. Now into the semi-finals, Atletico, the club Coque joined aged eight, will again face Real Madrid for the fourth time in four seasons as they attempt to become champions of Europe for the first time. I've never played for any other club, but I know that here, each and every day, we focus on humility and work ethic. I think that those are the fundamental values in our daily lives. Coque made his first team debut in 2009, aged 17, and has developed and progressed becoming an integral figure in Diego Simeone's side. A product of Atleti's youth academy, the 25-year-old has already made over 300 appearances for the club. Atleti's identity has always been based on players developing through the youth academy. It's very important for this club to have academy players such as Gabi, Fernando Torres, Saul and Lucas. Everyone plays a very important part in our success. A versatile and energetic midfielder, Koke starred in a number of different positions across the midfield, making him a stabilising influence on the team wherever he plays. There are matches where I feel more comfortable on the wing, and there are others where I feel more comfortable in the middle. In a game where we have more possession, I prefer to play in the middle, and when we have less, I tend to play more on the wing. But as long as I can help my team, I'm happy. En route to a third semi-final appearance in four seasons, Atleti have won seven of their ten Champions League games, conceding just five goals and losing only once. I think we've improved with the changes that have taken place and with the new players that have come in. It was important that all these new signings performed well on the pitch, and that has proven to be the case. They've helped to make us a stronger group as a whole. Next, Atletico Madrid travel across the Spanish capital to face Real for the eighth time in this competition, as Coque and his Atleti teammates set their sights on club football's ultimate prize. Losing two Champions League finals is something that I will never forget. We will hopefully win this competition someday and bring an end to this run of bad luck. Losing twice against your biggest rivals is always painful. But we are Atletico and we always bounce back. So on Tuesday, the Madrid derby, 
And on Wednesday, Gianluigi Buffon and Kylian Mbappe as Monaco face Juventus. Next week, Paolo Dybala, the Argentinian star shining bright in Turin. This magazine programme...